to the Buffalo Bills of Western New York. To the Rock Pile. I'm drinking Squirt! Fireball. To the Ralph. To Rich Stadium. To now Highmark Stadium. To the it's formerly still known as the New same Era. Gridiron that holds the blue collar. <gasps> Buffalo Bills of Buffalo, New York. Of Orchard Park, New York. Welcome back to another edition of The House That Alan Built. This is episode 27, week 17. I'm Scott Kim Martin. With me as always, Greg Vollmer. And today we're going to talk about the Buffalo Bills. 12 and 3 taking on the 11 and 4 Cincinnati Bengals in Cincinnati at Paycor Stadium. I hate the names of these stadiums, how they're always selling out under a different Highmark, contract. Paycor. New Era, all these other names. New Era was awesome. I know, but these guys need to stick with the name. It's like Gillette Stadium is Gillette Stadium. New Era Lambeau made Field sense. is Lambeau Field. Anyway, it's going to be Monday, January 2nd, just after the new year. The Buffalo Bills they will take on the it's, AFC It's already North. being billed by some as the game of the year, at least the Monday Night Football game of the year. It is. It's a lot of expectations, but... It is two of the top three ranked teams in the AFC. They will face off in Cincinnati on Monday night, as we just mentioned. This Monday night game will be the team record sixth primetime game of the year for the Buffalo Bills. And they've won all five of the previous primetime games. Primetime Bills. The leader of the AFC East and the leaders of the AFC North will face off for the 33rd time. It's actually the third time on Monday night. And the Bills lead the overall series 17 wins to 15 losses. The most recent Monday night matchup was in 1991 with Jim Kelly leading the Buffalo Bills to victory 35-16 after throwing five touchdown passes. That was back when running backs were rushing for 1,000 yards regularly and he still threw for five touchdowns. So that's pretty impressive. That team, of course, went to the Super Bowl. Now it's raining out, man. Mm -hmm. Like, the weather is either miserable and freezing or blizzard-like temperatures, whether it's in Buffalo or the Windy City or here in Portland, Oregon. Yeah, it got to 19 degrees here uh, before Christmas. It did, and it was, my car was frozen over, and I'm sure you had to heat up the car to go to work. Oh, yeah. I didn't have a uh, ice scraper, so I had to go and use a dustpan. To oh, I thought you were going to tell me to use a credit card, because you could do that, too. No, it was too too far gone for a credit card. The wow. ice was too thick to use a credit card, because I've, I've, that's what I was going Dang. to Dang! So I had to go... And find a dustpan and break enough off. I wish you filmed that. I can picture you doing that. Yep. And you know, just like back in Buffalo, you have to let your car run for twenty to thirty minutes to heat up. I was letting I let it run for like twenty minutes before I did that. It wasn't the the and I had the the windshield the defrost the defrost on. You know, my car heats up within five minutes, but we don't really need that here generally because it's not ever really below twenty degrees or thirty two. Nineteen degrees for Portland, Oregon is pretty cold. Pretty pretty cold. Even though it rains a lot here, it, the Pacific Northwest is wet, but it's not really super cold like that. We don't get snow but a couple days a year, and if it sticks for a couple days, that's pretty long because the ground doesn't get cold enough. And then if you want to go to the, the beach, it's an hour and a half to the coast, or if you want to go to Mount Hood, it's an hour there. Mm-hmm. And there, you're in government camp. You'll get buried with three to five feet of snow there. Yeah, it's a wild area. I like having the options, though. Anyway, tell me about this uh, Monday night game. All right, so it's going to mark the 89th primetime game in Bill's history. Uh, uh, and it's the 16th under Sean McDermott already, which is hard to believe. That is crazy, and he's got a record of... He's got a record of 10-5, and five, which is impressive. Like, he... So... During the playoff drought, I feel like I've mentioned this too much, but I always, you know, the the playoff drought gets brought up here and there. We were horrible on primetime games amongst regular time games in the playoff drought. I'll never forget the Monday night game against Tony Romo. That that was brutal. That was what 2007, and he came back. He threw six interceptions. I want to say he pulled a Nathan Peterman. And they still won. And the the kick return fumble. Oh, Dante Whitner, who no, had no, death no, no. threats. It wasn't Whitner. It Mc, was uh, Mick. Uh, the kick. Uh, it was our quarterback, right? Yes, McKelvin. Leotis yes, McKelvin. So Leotis McKelvin, yeah, fumbles the ball when. Oh my god! Everything that could go wrong did go wrong, and then the the Cowboys got the onside kick, and then fucking Nick Folk, I believe it was, that booted the game winning. <sighs> field goal um and then the how about the sunday night football game where the bills got beat by the patriots like 50 to 10 we don't need to rehash those old wounds but long story short the bills haven't had a good record in prime time since the mcdermott and bean era but they've amongst many other things have turned that that around as well so yeah mcdermott has a 10 and 5 record which is just absolutely amazing winning percentage of 0.635 
Um, Bills and Bengals will be meeting for the first time since September 22nd, 2019, when the Bills won 21 to 17 on a touchdown rush by Frank Gore. Now, 2019 was before Joe Burrow, so Josh Allen has never faced Joe Burrow. So this is going to be a clash between two AFC teams that I feel like brings me back to the 88-89 season for the Bills, where they won the AFC East and they made it to the playoffs. They would have gone to five Super Bowls in a row if it weren't for that first loss in the playoffs against the Bengals. Wow, it seems like a lifetime ago that Frank Gore was finishing kind of the twilight of his career with us. I know. Man, he was a... Talk about a beast, man. He finished third all-time with 16,000 yards exactly and then was done. And uh, what a a Hall of Famer. Yep, and then since the start of the 2021 season, Josh Allen and Joe Burrow are tied for second in the most NFL touchdown passes behind Patrick Mahomes at 68 to Patrick Mahomes to 74. Yep, and Allen and Burrow have 39 total touchdowns each, at least. That might have been before this week, but either way, they're right there in line at 68. It's so neck and neck. I mean, this is like just from an individual statistic standpoint and a team statistic standpoint, you couldn't ask for a much better matchup this late in the season on Monday Night Football. In a time slot that hasn't had the best of games, they've had a few good ones, but predominantly the games have been pretty lackluster. Yeah. So so Monday Night Football and ESPN is they're licking their chops for this oh, one. Yeah. No, this is this is gonna be the game of the year in my opinion, because the Bills, if they win this game, just have to beat the Patriots next week and they no matter what happens with the Bengals and Chiefs moving forward, will lock in the number one seed. And because there are seven teams now instead of six that make the playoffs, there's only one team that gets a first round bye and that's the number one seed. When we're comparing these offenses and the defenses, the offenses are so similar. The quarterbacks are both clutch they're very good one came out in 2018 one came out in 2020 burrows already led his team to the super bowl last year they obviously lost to the rams but they still have a hell of a team there is a crucial injury on the offensive line for the Bengals that could make a big difference for our defensive line Lyle getting collins. through Lyle collins yep he is out with a torn acl mcl so points per game we're looking at the bengals at, in uh fifth most and bills fourth most and then points allowed per game defense bills have allowed the second least amount, and the Bengals have allowed the ninth least amount. So, I mean, two solid offenses and two good defenses. Yeah, we're pretty much talking about a difference of three points per game. Yeah, and yards per game, the Bills average 412 yards per game, which is second best, and Cincinnati at 385 is fifth best. So, look at that. Top five, again, a top ten, of top five, yeah. and then passing yards per game, Bengals are third, Bills are seventh, and then rushing yards per game, this is where they're different because Mixon's been hurt. He's played in 11 games out of the 15 games. They are averaging 98 yards on the ground. We're, we're averaging 143. Things we're Allen. a top 10 rushing team. I don't even yeah. care if it's held partly because of Allen. It's, we're still a top 10 rushing team. We are number eight, and we're number one in yards per play. Yes, yes, yards per rush. rush. And that helps when last week they averaged 8.2 yards per carry. Teams um, have to acknowledge it. Now, one thing that I normally don't pay attention to because I don't really care about time of possession, this will matter in the fourth quarter if we're holding on to a lead or if we're down and we need to score. If they can maintain the ball as well as they have all year, time of possession, the Bengals are number three and Bills are 17th. Now, Bills early on in the season were scoring quickly, so time of possession didn't matter. But going against a team like this, when rushing matters, as we've learned the last month, we've been more methodical and more balanced at getting the run game. Like last week, we had 254 rushing yards on the ground we need a game like that but i want to see since the weather is going to be a lot more mild you said it's going to be 40s or 50s it's supposed to be in the 40s 50s there's supposed to be some rain but i'll take it i will take that any day over 30 mile an hour winds or minus 13 wind chill as far as third down efficiency bills are obviously great they're number one in the league but so Bengals are top five they're number four on defense Bills are 11th in sacks with 39, and Bengals are 29th with 26. So they don't necessarily get to the quarterback as much. In interceptions, we're 5th, they're 18th. But really, that's a matter of three interceptions over the course of 15 games. Not that significant. It's going to be a hell of a matchup. When I'm looking here at players, obviously we've got Joe Burrow and Josh Allen. It's going to be a clash of two very good quarterbacks. Burrow's been averaging 284 yards a game in the air. Allen, 269. Now, we talked about the total touchdowns. Allen's thrown 32 touchdown passes. Burrow's thrown 34. Allen's thrown 13 interceptions. Burrow's thrown 12. And then on the ground, this is where they're very different because you've got Burrow, uh, he's thrown for, or he's ran for 247 yards in five touchdowns, which is good. Yeah. So he's good in the red zone when he needs to be. But Allen, 746 yards on the ground and seven touchdowns. The difference is Allen has uh, ran it 40 more times, 43 more times. 
and he has one more fumble. So we do not want those red zone costly interceptions or fumbles. We don't want that. We don't want this to be the this year's version of a, a slip up on the last play of the game because I do feel like, based on what we both think, it's going to come down to one score game. It's going to be a high scoring game. And we want the Bills to win this. My prediction was the Bills win 31-27. So a four-point game. It'll come down to one possession probably in the final minute of the game. Your prediction? So I originally, back way back in our very first episode uh, of the podcast, I predicted that this was going to be one of the Bills' losses. Yep. I am changing my tune on it. Yeah, just like I changed my tune uh, against the Ravens in our preseason predictions, I, I thought we were going to lose. And we didn't. Uh, we were able to contain Lamar Jackson this time around. You've changed, and yeah, for a good I will. Reason. I mean, we're two games away from stealing up a, a one seed, so I'm not going to pick up. It's going to be a close game. I think it's going to be a stressful game. Yeah, but I can't. I'm not going to pick against the Bills on this one. It's I don't I, blame you. My prediction is going to be 35-28 in a nail biter, seven point game, touchdown game. Classic. Hopefully, a classic. Well, I'll take look, it. Whatever it is, is I want to win. This is the best offense and the best quarterback that we have faced since we played the Chiefs. Yep. And Mahomes. And, and and Burrow is 4-0 and against uh, Mahomes. We can't say that. And he beat them in the playoffs when it mattered. We haven't been able to do that yet. And last year I said, if the Bills get past the Chiefs, they will beat the Bengals and they will win in the Super Bowl if it's against the Rams or the Bucks. My prediction didn't happen only because we didn't get past the Chiefs. I feel like we were a coin flip yeah. away, one possession yeah. away, and this is our year to prove that I was right. No, for sure. And that we can match up with the Bengals and beat them when it matters. I think the Bills fan base, though, did get a little too big for their britches and that we didn't give enough credit to the Bengals. Like, it was almost like the Bengals, like, were just this lucky team that made it. Made they had it six the wins Bowl. before that, the year before. And then they come through and Joe Burrow sneaks them into the playoffs. Yeah, I, mean, and I, they think, just... I think it was, understandably, we were all frustrated as to how we lost against the Chiefs. And so I think that part of that frustration and venting, we had to, like, deflect it somewhere and some of that went to the Bengals, and it's like well we, we could have easily won against the Bengals if we would have hosted them in buffalo the next week but i still i i just feel like we didn't give them enough credit they have shown this year that they didn't weren't just one and done they weren't they didn't suffer from a super bowl hangover they started off slow had some injuries jamar chase wasn't quite doing what he was doing early in the season and he got banged up and he was out for three games yep my god the offensive line for the Bengals in the first three four weeks of the season was preposterously bad under burrow they got him hurt his rookie year and i'm like they got to keep him upright and last year they were able to somewhat do that and they made it to the yeah, Super Bowl. the first month of the season like he was getting slammed Every game, he's that's why this thrown in the dirt. That's why this Collins injury for their offensive line. He's True. their best player, yeah, yeah. and I feel like that is huge. Now we obviously lost Miller, so let's say it's eye for an eye, right? We still have Epinesa and Basham and and um, Oliver and and all these other guys that need to step up and do what they do. Greg Rousseau, he needs to he needs a sack or two in this game. We need yeah. the pressure. That I mean, we, he, needs to, he needs to be Yvonne in this game. He does. he does. He needs to be a disruptor and the difference to seal the game. What I was saying is just, yeah, yeah I just I felt like there was, from just what I sensed, there was a lot of Bills Mafia that maybe just kind of assumed we were going to beat the Bengals, like it was a given last year. And I just feel like what we're seeing overall in totality leading up to this game is it may not have been as easy as we thought it was going to be. No. But this is a great opportunity, like you said, to right the wrongs, to to prove that you were right, that a lot of fans were right, that yes, we could have beat them in Buffalo. Um, it, yeah, now on, it's in on Cincinnati. paper, this is a matchup that's like made in heaven. I it guess. it really is. And Allen does well on Monday nights. He uh, it has six you got cr- Joe Cool. Yeah, he's he's clutch. You know what? We should be smoking the cigars now. But after we beat them, we can do it. In six career Monday night games, Josh Allen has thrown eighteen touchdowns to two interceptions. That's what we need. We need that QBR of 114, Josh Allen. Yep. We don't need the guy that throws these inexplicable turnovers yep. or fumbling the ball on the goal line. No excuses with win. This hopefully, no. you know, hopefully there's no win to deal with. And our defense needs to do what it's been doing all season. And the point differential is unreal. The Bills lead the NFL in point differential of 157 positive 157 points that's scoring that many more than you've allowed best they, in the league they rank fourth in scoring with 420 points so far and second in points allowed 26.3 we've got the the system down we've got the team to beat the Bengals. they almost lost last week they almost lost the week before they had a great first half I last almost week. lost to the patriots and last week against the patriots they almost squandered that 
If it weren't for a Stevenson fumble, who knows how that game would have finished. Obviously, we beat the Patriots. We got to see them again the following week. We'll see how we do then. This game, I don't even know what else to say other than we're going to hear Joe Buck and Troy Aikman talk about Allen versus Mahomes. Uh, we have heard that in the past. But now it's Allen versus Burrow. What What's it going to be? Um, well, I just want to say, so uh, on the last podcast we mentioned uh, about just the adversity that not only the city of Buffalo has gone through, but the team in general this year. And uh, Jordan Poyer was quoted um, this week on the resiliency of this team in 2022. And I wanted to read the quote because it's, it's pertinent to this. Uh, Jordan Poyer says, it just shows a lot of the mental toughness that this team has been able to deal with adversity. It just shows that we've got a lot of great leaders on this team and a lot of young guys that just brought into every that just bought into everything that we do here so it's pretty special we've got a lot of football left and we want to continue to get better i mean that spoken like a true leader and captain of the defense he's a guy that we need more than ever and yeah, without hide i'm not sure how this defense would do with without poyer because we've been without hide well we're undefeated with with poyer and that's true not with without him so. i think we're 90 now with poyer in the in the lineup yeah well the yeah, i think lineup. at least yeah yeah and uh, i mean we've lost three games by a total of eight points we do not want this to be another one of those nail biters obviously it would be a good game and be like oh shucks we'll see him again in the playoffs like we did against the chiefs we yeah. beat the chiefs twice in regular season i will say this if we were to lose against them, and then it, co- it comes down to the playoffs in the divisional round where we have to go back to Cincinnati, this sounds like the new Bills versus Chiefs matchup. Because if we lose to them, we got to get revenge. And if we beat them in the playoffs when it matters, it won't matter because hopefully and, we will be well, hosting. And, that, and that's why won't. the one seed's so important it is. because we don't want to have to go to Cincinnati before we even face go the to, Chiefs. Because then why we anyone, go yeah, into Arrowhead. Anyone that's like, oh, you know, hoorah, like... Like we've got the team that's that's been tested, so even if we don't get the one seed, we've got the the toughness. Well, look, that's all good, but you don't want to have to go to Cincinnati and then have to go to Kansas City no. when you could be in the comfort of your own home, in front of your own fans, with your own crowd noise, and then and then be able to host guaranteed. That's the thing, guaranteed host two games. Whereas and, if we don't get that one seed, we're only guaranteed to host one home game. In the early nineties. Like I said, we went to four straight Super Bowls. It could have been five if we had beaten the Bengals in in the 88-89 season, and it didn't happen. The only reason why we made it to that many was because we were able to secure the home field advantage. You know, we've gone back-to-back-to-back AFC East champions now. The last time we did that was 88-91, to which was four years in a row. We need to guarantee home field advantage not only for Buffalo and Bills fans, but because that's really the true way to get the number one seed and rest because you get one buy a year and we need that second buy. We need to get our guys healthy. We need to get some rest after these, uh, after showing this resilience that Poyer's yeah, right. talking about. And with McDermott, it, this team doesn't strike me as the team that with everything they've been through the last three years, this doesn't strike me as a team or organization that's going to struggle with having that week off. There are some that would. Yeah. And there's always that conversation of, is the one week off going to make them cold? Are they going to come out, you know, and, and, and be sluggish? I don't, there's none, none of the things that are going on with this team and the focus and the leadership strikes me as a team that's going to struggle with having that week off. I think, yeah. like you said, it's going to be just, it's only going to be a good thing. These numbers, you know, it's just ridiculous how we we just keep breaking our own records. And speaking of records... Back in the 80s and 90s, we had some guys like Jim Kelly and Dan Marino going at it and putting up great numbers on Monday Night Football. And speaking oh. of Dan Marino... Well, yeah, Josh Allen is now the number one scorer in his first five seasons in the NFL. He has the most total touchdowns of 174 that surpasses Dan Marino's 171. That's the player that scored the most touchdowns in the first five seasons, and there are still two games left. Mm -hmm. So he can smash that record, let's hope. And he did a lot more of it with his legs, but it just goes to show he's he's much more of a dual-threat quarterback, which in this day and age is more relevant. Dual? Triple! He actually has one of those touchdowns is a receiving touchdown, and that was against Texans, uh, Texans in, the playoffs, in the playoffs. Where he did the John Brown celebration yep. at the end. The... Yep. So 135 of those touchdowns are passes, 38 of those touchdowns are on the ground, and then you've got that one receiving touchdown. So he is... It's a huge accomplishment. The only quarterback in NFL history with 30-plus TD passes and 6-plus rushing TDs in three different seasons. So, And 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 real quick, just to get on my MVP soapbox, I'm, it's going to make it real short. Allen isn't in the top two right now. I, I would say that Hurts and Mahomes are the one and two. As much as it sucks for me to say that, but I'm, I'm, I'm trying not to be be biased. I say it's um, Mahomes number one, and, and, and 2A and 2B are Burrow and Allen. 
Yeah, but and then but yeah. Which is funny. Two yeah. A would be Alan A. Two B would be yeah. B Burrow. Yeah. Yeah, I just think I do think that Allen just the the interceptions. That's what that's what kind of did him in last year, and that's what di- has kind of begun to do him in this year as far as kind of cooling off in the MVP yeah, race. Yeah, but he had like five games um, where there were almost no turnovers. For sure, he went back to back to back three well, games no, with what, six it, turnovers. It goes to show that he's his own worst critic, and he can self regulate. He can correct because after those those you know what it was it six interceptions in three weeks. Yeah, he didn't throw any in three weeks so he, yep. it, it, he we know he's able to correct and you know he's the hardest person on himself out of anyone but i'm just saying that even though they're you know the national media and the betting world is saying that he's got two people at least ahead of him there are you cannot argue with me that that there's been a quarterback this year that's been through more adversity that's had a tougher schedule that's had to play through crazy weather the elements are the crazy biggest crazy difference Mahomes in schedule playing in... on thursdays playing yeah. on saturdays playing on mondays yep. sundays um yep. so i mean that look i'm not trying to make a case here it's, it, what i say is not going to change whether he gets it or not but i'm just saying for all the people that are going to be clamoring about how allen isn't even close no, Allen has gone through the whole team. It, it, it isn't just an individual award, like McDermott would say, but but the whole team has just gone through so much adversity this year. Yeah, you brought up the stats about the difference between Allen and Mahomes that we talked about before, and Allen has a worse offensive line. He's played in much worse weather conditions than Mahomes this year. And as good as Knox is, he's Mahomes. not a Kelsey. Kelsey has no, had... I mean, what ten consecutive one thousand yard seasons and his smashing Kelsey, records for if touchdowns? They, if they lost, okay, this year proved that they could they could lose uh, Tyreek. Tyre but if they lost Kelsey, what what would happen? We talk about Allen having McKenzie or Beasley as a safety blanket. You want to talk about the best safety blanket in the league? That would be Kelsey, Hands Travis down. Kelsey. Hands down. I don't want to make excuses for Allen over Mahomes or anything like that. It, like I've mentioned in previous weeks, I don't give a crap. Mahomes who's... is amazing. Burrow's amazing. And they... Mahomes is only 27 and will probably win another MVP this year. But I want Super Bowl MVP to be Josh Allen. I don't care about the regular season MVP. Look at what happened, like I said. Back-to-back MVP winner Aaron Rodgers did absolutely nothing in the playoffs for that team. They didn't win another Super Bowl. Don't care. The fact that there's this much competition is amazing. It's a mm-hmm. it's great for the league. Mm-hmm. It shows that th- there's a lot of great quarterbacks, and that's what it's about. I mean, that's and, what you had the the Steve Youngs and the Mark Brunels and the Joe Montanas and the Brett Favres and the John Elways of the nineties and the thousands and, 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 and like this is that next generation. Like this is it. Like this is the. This is the time period where that, like, we still talk about, we were born in the 80s. So, like, we're talking about the 80s, 90s, early 1000s. Yeah. That, 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 that there was that era of those quarterbacks. And, like, we're in the new era. Like, we're going to be talking 20 years from now about this. Like, yeah. and oh, yeah. we're in it now. So. I don't want to take it for granted the fact that we can sit here each week and predict that the Bills are going to win almost every game. And then they actually do. And we're upset when they only win by 22 against a team because they're 3 and 12. Like, no. No, be happy because this is something where we're wearing shirts like this that say Bills run the East. I still have my sweaters from the early 90s when that happened. I I thought, oh, it'll happen again in 2000, 2010. No, took, we're in t- 2022 time. and we can now brag about it again. Thankfully, the fact that the Bills are going into Cincinnati against the defending Super Bowl runner up and they're one and a half point favorites. The over-under is 49 and a half, so they're expecting nearly 50 points to be scored. The implied score would be 25-24 Bills, and I predict 31-27, you predict 35-28. Yep. We've said pretty much everything we needed to say about that. Now we get into some of the people I worry about, and that is, even though Mixon's been banged up and played in 13 games and Singletary's played in all 15, you're looking at Singletary averaging 53 yards a game, Mixon 61. Really not that much of a difference. Singletary's had five rushing touchdowns. Mixon's had six. I like Mixon more, but you love Singletary. You I love actually have there. Mixon on your fantasy team, didn't you? One yeah, of them. I did. Yeah, in your league, yeah. I think our number twos are are better. We we've got we've got Cook. They've got P Ryan. Who's he's good. He's averaging twenty five yards a game. But Cook is is actually doing even better than that. And as a rookie from the beginning of the year, when he had that fumble early on, and now he's had back to back touchdowns and breakaway runs. He just looks like he's got that that spring in his step that we don't have elsewhere. Singletary's shifty, but he's shorter. He's bulky. He's just a different running back, and I like him. He's nice. He gets the four yards per carry you need and want. But I'm excited to see 
what we do. Again, they match up pretty well. Maybe it's the one-two punch that uh, Bean and McDermott were hoping for when they drafted him in the second round. Or maybe Cook takes over number one and we lose Singletary. Either way, well, we have our one-two. I think that's a given, but yeah. as far as the rest of the season, yep. they're going to be the one-two punch. Like, yeah. Keep each other fresh, keep the defense on their heels. And if the Bills do win toes. the Super Bowl, it's just like losing um, coaches. You lose staff members that get head coaching jobs elsewhere. You're going to lose players that get plucked on other teams during free agency because you can't afford them all. And that's what keeps the league honest and even. And that's best teams get the lowest draft picks, right? Yeah. And then the worst teams get the highest. So I'm worried about that trio for wide receivers where they've got not only Jamar Chase, but T. Higgins and Tyler Boyd. And you it's know dangerous. what? Their tight end, Hurst, he's pretty solid too. Um, again, a matchup where you've got Knox and Hurst. Hurst right? has soft hands. He's yeah, He's no joke. Hurst has 48 receptions for 400 yards and two touchdowns. Knox, 46 receptions, but 504 and five touchdowns. So Knox has had more points uh, in the red zone. He's had 100 more yards. But looking at Chase, who's only had 11 games, he's still averaging 87 yards a game, and he has eight touchdowns in 11 games. Higgins, 68 yards a game, five yards a catch, seven touchdowns. And then you've got Tyler Boyd. 47, 48 yards a game, five touchdowns. If you're comparing that to Diggs, who averages 88 yards a game, basically Diggs and Chase, right? Yep. Then you've got uh, Gabe Davis, who averages 57 yards a game and has seven touchdowns, to Higgins, 68 yards and seven touchdowns. And then you've got McKenzie, 29 yards a game and four touchdowns. Boyd, 47 yards a game, five touchdowns. Yeah. It's a pretty good uh, yeah, trio. Boyd, Boyd started out hot. And yes, he, he did. He simmered down a little bit. He did, and he sat on my bench for most of the <laughs> fantasy season. So that's basically my biggest worry on offense. As far as the defense goes, like I said, they don't get to the quarterback as much. Um, with their uh, offensive lineman Collins out, hopefully we get to their quarterback because when Burrow gets, un gets pressured, even though he's Joe Cool, he still gets sacked a lot, and I'm hoping that continues. Because we need that victory more yeah. than ever. I mean, like on both sides of the ball, this is an awesome matchup. Like you've got, we, we just talked about the offense a lot, and then our defense has some unheralded, kind of unsung heroes, and then some some shining stars. Yep. Their defense don't, doesn't have as much star power, but they've got a lot of like blue collar type, like yes. very like yeah. quiet, quietly sound uh, on the defensive line. So is uh, yeah, both. Uh, it's just the matchup all together is uh, it's one made for Monday night. Yes, and we've got um, a couple of familiar faces that we want to talk about. Even though he's not a starter, Justin Murray, which is an offensive lineman for the Bills, he actually went to high school in Cincinnati, and he played at the University of Cincinnati and was a member of the Bengals in 2017. And then Bills fullback Reggie Gilliam and uh, their offensive guard Roger Saffold, mm -hmm. is, uh, they're both Ohio natives, and Reggie Gilliam actually played a, at Toledo, which is in Ohio. And Matt Barkley was yeah. actually a backup in 2018 for the Bengals. Jake Kumaro, who is supposed to be coming off of IR possibly this week, depending on how that ankle is doing, he was actually signed by the Bengals as an undrafted free agent in 2015. And then he went that. to the uh, Packers. <laughs> yes, he and ended up with the Packers. the Packers. As we know, Rodgers was pissed when he yeah. got cut and all that. This is a fun fact for me because I went to UCF, but Bengals wide receivers coach Troy Walters was the offensive coordinator and wide receivers coach for Bills wide receiver Gabe Davis while he was at UCF. And that was during his freshman year in 2017. So pretty cool mm -hmm. stat. Yeah. So you predict that the Bills win. I predict that the Bills win. It's going to be a nail biter, most likely. What a game. What a matchup. I'm still nervous. Um, I do hope the Bills come out on top. Um, I, I just want to get into a couple of these cards. We'll get into a, a quick little run through of the other matchups in the league, and then final words from you. Yeah, I just I hope this week goes by fast because I am already antsy, just wanting this game to come. So I cannot wait. This card here that we have is Josh Allen. This is a rookie card. Greg really wanted me to put this one out here. It's it's, it's a sought after rookie card. It's it's like yeah. one where if you um, look at collectors, they look they put it on their top list. Yeah, they for, do for top rookie 10. cards that you want to try to grab. Yeah, Prism makes a nice card, and this is one of his rookies here. Yeah, ungraded, it's going from anywhere from one fifty to three hundred. Graded, it's going anywhere from three fifty to half of a grand. So yeah, and I've it's got no joke of a card. I've got that same card, but autographed and uh, certified. Um, so I'm I'm excited. I've got two, and I know you want that one. Yeah, I might have to get it, get it from you at some point here. 
Uh, this one is a Panini Instant 2018 rookie, one of 467. Um, and it's a Josh Allen rookie card uh, captured from him at the Combine. So what the, happens with uh, with the Instant ones is they print that right after they take the photos and they, they get those out on the market. And that was, I believe, before he was ever even drafted by the Bills. So that's um, his Combine photo. But that's Josh Allen, 2018. I just want to say, Bills Mafia... Whether you're in Western New York or anywhere across the entire United States or the entire world, uh, if you're going to the Bills game in Cincinnati, just make sure to bring the noise, have fun tailgating, don't forget to pound some Labats, jump through some tables responsibly, and as always, take a few hydration breaks. And if you're not going to the game, whether you're at your own house or at a bar or at a friend's place or... Wherever you may be, I hope you have a great time and enjoy the game. Stay warm, stay safe. All right, so let's do a quick little rundown of the games that are going on. We've got the Bears going to the Lions. I know you called them the, the well, what did you call the most I'm never forgive. Team? I'm never going to forgive. The, I, the Detroit Lions are such a poverty franchise. Well, these are two of the most crime-riddled cities in America f- clashing off in Week 17. Minus 10 points. Minus 10 points against one of the worst teams in the league. Well, Detroit couldn't, is couldn't a touchdown a, favorite. Couldn't give me just zero. I could have. I could have just not started a defense and done better. <laughs> oh, I'm God. gonna go with the Bears on this one. They beat the Detroit Lions. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we've got Brian Dable's eight six and one Giants taking on the Colts, who are four ten and one. Are they gonna tie? <laughs> Maybe they will. The Giants win this one. Yeah, the Giants should be winning this one. Then we've got the Commanders taking on the Cleveland Browns in Washington. There are two point favorite here. Washington. Yeah, Browns are six and nine. Washington seven seven and one. Whether it's Wentz or Heineke, they probably. I'm sure. I'm sure. Just given how things work in fantasy, Donovan, Donovan People Jones will probably put up twenty points. So yeah, the week you don't. Yeah. You can't use them, and then you've got Seattle as a one point favorite over the New York Jets. I'm not sure. They're both seven and eight. That's that's probably and then a coin they get flip. Mike White back. Um, yeah, Mike White will be starting where Zach Wilson will be on the bench, not even in uniform. I'll go Seattle. J E T S. Suck, suck, suck. <laughs> All right, then we've got the ten and five Baltimore Ravens taking on the Pittsburgh Steelers seven and eight. This is Tomlin. His record is being threatened to have his first season under five hundred. What happens? Man, it's tough. Division to, rival. Yeah, it's tough to bet against Tomlin in December. And it's it's also tough to bet against them if, if Lamar Jackson isn't playing. I'm going Pittsburgh in a close one. Nail biter. Maybe a three point game. All right. I, I would like to see some more pick at the pickings. We'll see how that goes. Yep. And then you've got, of course, the Chiefs get an easy one against the Broncos who are falling apart. I mean, yeah, it wasn't way. easy the first time they met, but and and the only thing you could think of where the Broncos would have a chance in hell is if if they play, you know, emotionally play well for the interim coach. But the last time we saw this team play on Christmas against the Rams, the team quit on their coach. Uh, it looked like some of the offensive linemen quit on their quarterback because they, they were, I think they were purposely not helping Wilson up after getting pummeled to the ground. So I don't know. I mean, unless they magically turn their attitudes around. They, I mean, you're talking about a team that literally just quit on their coach and he got fired. Chiefs don't lose this game because they're just a much better franchise right now. Well, okay. Then we've got the Eagles, who may be back with Jalen Hurts um, because they have the number one seed on the line right now because the Vikings have a good record and they are 12-3. and three. So if the Eagles were to lose that, they... Uh, they take a chance of losing that number one seed in home field advantage, as we've talked about. That's super important. They are taking on the Saints, who are six and nine. Whether it's Hurts or Minshew, the Eagles win this one. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you on that. And I then think even even their defense could win this one alone. Now we've got the fiery Texans taking on the Jaguars. Uh, they're both teams are doing well lately. They're being competitive. Uh, the Jacksonville Jaguars, led by Trevor Lawrence, they're they're doing well. This shows you what uh, an actual coach peterson can do mm-hmm. versus urban meyer F- um, urban meyer i pick the jaguars i'll go with the jaguars too then we've got the vikings 12 and 3 taking on green bay this is big because green bay 7 and 8 they still are mathematically possible to make the playoffs um doesn't this seem like one of those games that the packers it, would pull out yes you know you got the vikings that have had an all been in all these close games you got rogers that somehow pulls something out of his the, ass the vikings Need to win this if they, whether they do or not, if the Eagles win, they get number one seed. So maybe that's how Minnesota comes into this. They're like, eh, you know, we can do the come from behind. We've done it 11 times this year. And then 
forgetting about Aaron Rodgers, who's the comeback kid. Yeah, I mean, I don't think they're going to forget or play like uh, be um, cocky going into this, or like you know, I think they're going to understand the opponent. But I don't know the Viking. The Vikings have been in so many close games, and the the Packers are probably going to be the more urgent team. So I just yeah. it just seems like one of those games where like the Packers pull this thing out. Well, you see, early on in the season, Watson had dropped that first his first catch. Sorry, his first drop would have been his first catch. Would have been a big long wide touchdown. open, and that that messed with his confidence. It messed with Aaron Rodgers' confidence to throw the ball to him. But clearly, they've had some chemistry over the last month and a half, and it's showing. I picked Green Bay. Yeah, I'm gonna go. This pains me because I'm a Vikings fan too, with my family being Vikings fans. But I'm going to say this just seems like the kind of game that strikes me that Green Bay pulls out. Yep. And then we've got the 4-11 and Cardinals taking on the 5-10 and Falcons. I don't care about either team right now. Uh, I, Nor do I. Uh, I'll just go ahead and say that the Falcons have the better running game with uh, Cordero Patterson and, and Tyler Algier. Yeah, I'm going to go them. Falcons. Yep, yeah. same here. Then this is more interesting than it should have been. But the 8-7 and Dolphins... Take on the seven and eight New England Patriots, and this could decide who gets second in the wild card. And no Tua, and no Tua, who is now out with a concussion and maybe out for the season. Yeah, could depending have a career on who you ask. If you ask the Dolphins, it's a second concussion. If you ask anyone with two eyes and a brain, it's his third concussion. I think. Uh, I think without Tua, the Dolphins lose this game. All right. Well, that then they would both be the, the eight Patriots and eight. may try to find a way to. F- it up once once or twice but. abc always be choking always be choking new england always be choking come on straight and now, from your straight from your wgr this is actually a bigger game than the records look but the buccaneers seven and eight are taking on the six and nine carolina Panthers. Unbelievable. This, this could decide who who gets that seed uh for the after t- all the sh- that's gone on the the panthers fire their head coach they get rid of baker mayfield they trade away their once in a generation running back McCaffrey, yep. and they're somehow still a game out of winning the fucking division <laughs> oh my gosh you know what that coach the interim coach needs to be considered full-time if if they make the playoffs yeah he'll probably get care. a job with the broncos and then get fired the next year <laughs> probably that's where coaches go to die i guess especially i mean heck it we we've been calling it for most of the season the heck it was gonna he wasn't going to be able to hack it. There were so many close one-score games, though, that the Broncos had that yes. if it did somehow, and they would have a winning record. Did yeah. go the other way because their defense kept them in it. It certainly uh, wasn't Wilson. Yeah, it was I mean, not Wilson under- or Rippon. I don't uh, vouch for any of the offensive linemen who, have, if they have been purposely giving up on plays and letting Wilson get sacked or not like picking him up after the play, like that's that's bush league. That's there's yeah. no place for that. But I can see though why why there's their frustration boiled over and they gave. You don't want to give up on anything. But you can see that they just mentally they hit they hit the the wall yep. like they they it was that moment where you're like I'll say when yep so we've got San Francisco at eleven and four taking on the six and nine Raiders I feel like the Raiders have thrown in the towel at this point their coach McDaniel should probably get fired uh, Josh McDaniels is I feel like he's not the answer uh, McDaniels will probably go back to, to ch- or uh, the Patriots yeah yep. And then and he'll then be their coordinator Tom instead Brady of who? will go back. You said, who did you say was going to be their offensive coordinator? Uh, next? Bill O'Brien. They're talking about Bill O'Brien. This week or next, next year? Next year, next year. Unless Josh McDaniels gets fired. but I think the Purdy train keeps on rolling down the tracks on this one. I do. I think that that matchup right now is not fair. And even if he just has an average or pedestrian game, I mean, they're just not on the same page right now. Maybe Carr could light it up with Adams. I don't know. i got to say something real quick. You know how there's uh, there's a lot of people that think the NFL's rigged? Yeah. You know, and there's yeah, a lot you, of conspiracy about- theorists <laughs> that think that it's rigged and that they get called in on what to do. Riddle me this, NFL Nation. If the NFL was rigged, why the f*** would they have a game second to last week of the season against the two LA teams? And you have a 5-10 and 10 Rams going uh-huh. against the 9-6 and six Los Angeles Chargers. If it was rigged, wouldn't you think that those that those would be a little bit more competitive to like bring up the ratings? Or that's why I argue that is that there right there is a big argument against people that think the NFL is rigged. If the NFL was rigged, this would be a nine and six versus a nine and six, or like it wouldn't be the, the sh- five and ten Rams versus the nine and six Chargers because that's not good for ratings. No, but nobody saw Matthew there's Stafford still getting hurt and, and being still that up bad. And down in this league, are, are there shitty calls by the refs here and there? Yes. Have there in the history of the NFL has there been refs that were paid off or what have you? Yes, 
but I don't think that on a weekly basis. There's people that have compared the league to WWE, and that's a slap in my face. Holy cow. That's no like, way is this a, Vix, oh, a Vince McMahon XFL dude, anytime, type Anytime, if you league. want to piss me off and trigger me, you say that, that, that the NFL is like the WWE. These players, these are grown-ass men that work out nine months a year, if not every day of the year. They have families. They need to earn that money. I know there's a lot more guaranteed money now than ever, but the, you think these injuries... And the the CTE crap that they have to deal with is going to interfere with the league and it being fixed. It's a difference between jumping off a rope into a, a floor that bounces and taking these half-ass slaps versus Shoot. these guys going full bore against each other. There's no way it's rigged. Bill's but, fans jumping through tables at tailgates more realistic than the shit you see on WWE. I do think games could get thrown by a ref. I do, it, whether it's incidental or not. I do think there are refs like the Bills uh, Bears game last week. The head ref is notorious for throwing the flag when it's unnecessary. Let the guys play. Now there's penalties for safety reasons you need to call, but there's times where you need to just let the players play. That's the most fun. You know, yeah, I just, games I just have, think that the individuals that think that there's a puppeteer and and like uh, Roger Goodell is getting no. puppeteered by some by the owners or whatever. There's someone above all of them that's that's the master puppet pulling all these strings. I don't think that's that's the case. No. With that being said, you've got Los Angeles playing Los Angeles. You've got the Rams and the Chargers. Chargers win that one. The Chargers are nine and six. They're led by Herbert. They've got a lot of talent. Mike Williams and Keenan Allen are healthy. I feel like they are going to be a, a, a lot to handle because the Rams are led by Baker Mayfield, who's had a hot streak, but he he won, he lost, he won. Is it going to be that up and down? Like I said, he might be one of the best backups in the league, or maybe he's still yeah. a viable starter somewhere. This could have a similar script to the Vikings-Packers game, where on paper the records are different, but you, you could have a much closer game than... Yeah, Something maybe special. Baker can do it again. I would like to see a close game. And honestly, it we don't have a dog in the fight, but the Chargers are in the AFC, and I don't know that I want to see them in the playoffs. Um, yeah, who knows? true. And that's the last game because the Monday night game is the Bills versus the, the Bengals, and we've already decided on that. Yeah. So with that being said, any final words for Bills Mafia? Bills Mafia, for those of you that are traveling to Cincinnati, Ohio, I hope you travel safe. Uh, tailgate your asses off. Pound some Labats, jump through some tables responsibly, and as always, of course, take a few hydration breaks. And for those of you that are not going to be traveling, whether you're in Western New York or anywhere across the world, be safe, have fun with those that you love, and uh, cheer on the Bills. Speaking of jumping through tables, if the Bills were to beat the Bengals, are we picking up a, a table and jumping through it? Yeah, I think that's a good idea. All right, so stay tuned for episode 28, which will be our week 17 recap of the Buffalo Bills taking on the Bengals. I'm Scott Kamartin. With me, as always, Greg Vollmer. Thank you for watching or listening to The House That Allen Built. We'll see you next week. Let's go, Buffalo! All right. Woo! It was a strong slap, strong finish. All right. Episode. 27. Week 17. All right, your guess is 35-28? Yeah. It's in Cincinnati, so hopefully they don't have any fucking blizzard going on. No, it's supposed to be, like, in the 50s. Oh, shit. Then let's get ready for a freaking shootout, bruh. Two of the top three ranked AFC teams will face off in Cincinnati on Monday Night Football. Monday's game is a team record six primetime outing in 2022 for the Bills, who have won the previous five. Also a team record. Hey, hey, hey. Let's, go, Buffalo. Let's go, Buffalo. Welcome back to another edition of The House That Ellen Built. This is episode 27. I'm Scott Kamartin. With me, as always, Greg Fulmer. Week 17, the Buffalo Bills will take on the Cincinnati Bengals. Are we ready? <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, I'll never get it. It's oh, this is um, this is for this week's games. If you if we if yeah. we have time to fire through them, we could. So they're expecting nearly fifty points to be scored, and that the the implied sorry, score. Man. Sorry, sorry. You could have waited two seconds. I'm sorry. 
He did, and he sat on my bench for most of the fantasy <laughs> season. You okay? Yeah. So what are your final... <laughs> oh my fucking God. <laughs> Holy shit. Is it because you have to use your left hand and you're right-handed maybe? I don't know, man. Because I don't have a problem. I mean, I I know. Know. it's boom. It's right. <laughs> I'm just giving you shit. My God, you're consistently bad at that. Oh, Hold on. Go, you keep pushing this. Hold on. Get your knee back, dude. Get your knee back. Dude, it's man. It's bullshit. <laughs> I did get it though. Will you stop kicking this table? It's on wheels, guys. So. <laughs> From now on, just fucking throw the card. <laughs> just take it, and launch it. I don't care if it's worth five hundred dollars. Oh my god. Hey! All right. So, final words to Bill's Mafia. What do you have to say? Jump through some. <laughs> Don't forget to pound some labats. Jump through some tables. Plummel to the ground. Yeah. Um, Plummeled. And then you've got uh, far. Who who are they starting? I have no fucking idea. <laughs> I don't either. I, I honestly don't, don't think McDaniel oh, knows yet. Who was out there when Tua got hurt the first time? Brisket or br brisket? Brisket. Yeah, some smoked brisket. Brisket. God, brisket sounds brisket good is right with now, the man. with the Browns. Dude, yes, get that, that does Traeger sound fired up. Oh my Smoke god, some brisket. That does sound Cook good. Cook it right all now. night. Have it tomorrow. Oh my god. Jump through to. <laughs> yep. Any. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> Bills Mafia. For those of you that are traveling to Cincinnati, Ohio, uh... <laughs> you can't get over it. Hey, it's 11-11. What time was it last week when you left? Because you came around the same time, didn't you? We gotta make a wish. I wish that the Bills run the table and win the Super Bowl. You're not supposed to say what you wished, but that's okay. Oh, f That's all right. Hold on, I'll do it again! <laughs> okay. You wish something? Mm-hmm. All right. I wish that you subscribe, that you watch this, that you listen to this, and that you share this. All right, go Bills.